in the 250 class, finishing in third, riding for Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, Justin Cooper. Finishing in second, riding for Troy Lee Designs, Red Bull KTM, Jordan Smith. And your winner, riding for Monster Energy, Parts Unlimited, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, Austin Forkner. And in the 450, finishing in third, riding for Red Bull KTM, Marvin Muskan. And in second, riding for Team Honda HRC, Ken Roxon. And your 450 winner riding for Red Bull KTM, Cooper Webb. Congrats, guys. Justin, I'll start with you. Mid to late in that main event, you're behind Alex Martin, sitting there about a second back. Was there a strategy in place to get him, or were you waiting for a mistake? Just kind of take us through that kind of mid to late push. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of mistakes out there coming from everyone. So uh, Jack was breaking down pretty quick. And uh, yeah, I was just being patient out there. Uh, kind of let the race come to me. and. Just kind of, I think settled a little bit too much in the beginning, but uh, that came with a bad start. And uh, yeah. towards the end of the race, there was like two minutes left and knew it was time to make the pass or get fourth. So I uh, stuck it in on him for the finish. And I think it was white flag right there and brought it home uh, for third. Jordan, take us through what happened on the starting line um, and just kind of the emotions you were feeling as the 30 second board was going up. Yeah, uh, this side on the side lap, that one had a different gearing. So we changed gearing before the main. Uh, no. Really? <laughs> no. I got a flat tire. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, Christian, my mechanic, did an amazing job to get that thing changed. Uh, it was – I didn't know what to think. Uh, the, definitely once – like, they started their bikes before he even had the, the nut off of the first wheel. So – uh, I was definitely getting a little nervous that it was going to drop and I wasn't going to be ready. Awesome. Congrats. Um, take us through your race. You got up front, had a clear track to yourself, obviously, until you got to the lap riders. But for the most part, you were by yourself. And I can imagine a lot of things are going through your mind. It was obviously over 15 minutes long. What was going through your mind through most of that race? Um, basically, I you don't want to think about not making mistakes because then you're going to make them, but just trying to click off lap after lap after lap and not really think about the guys behind me because I knew that they were kind of having battles of their own and um, I just tried to my starts were, were killer tonight both of them so I, I knew that if I could kind of break away in the first couple laps like I did in the heat race that um, I could get at least a little bit of breathing room and um, did that and then um, was kind of just uh, just out there trying to maintain it and um, I saw uh Whenever Jordan got in a second, I was like, all right, like, the, the, I mean, I might have to turn it up here. And then we were kind of matching each other a little bit. And then I think he was actually a little bit faster. And then uh, I think he ended up going down or to go down. Yeah. And then um, after that, it was kind of back to the maintaining stage. But I just wanted to keep focused ahead because when you, when you think, when you get to the kind of, all right, I'm going to settle stage, then uh, that's when you start making mistakes. So I was just trying to keep hitting my marks and keep uh, pushing forward. For the 450 guys, this is for all of you. We're six rounds into the championship now, two points separating four of you. And I'd, I'd have to look pretty close to see when we've had a championship that tight at this point. But I know it's early in the season, but still, as, as a racer, I know it goes through your mind and you're aware of the situation. Are, do you think championship at all while you're out there and managing points, not throwing it away, making passes four points? Just kind of take us through your mindset and your approach, even though we are this early, knowing that you guys are all really close right now. And uh, Marvin, start with you. Um, I mean, every weekend, uh, every Saturday, you want to do uh, the, the best and just uh, try to get a uh, first win. But uh, but right now, like getting a third place tonight is uh, was super important. So um, it was uh, it was a 
yeah, a few guys uh, ahead of me, and and I knew everybody was pretty much the same speed. I mean, like it was uh, it was really tight racing and uh, and hard to pass. So um, you, you you see you see the leader not too far ahead of you, and but but you know it's going to be super hard to uh, uh, to get there. So um, just uh, yeah, at one point I I didn't really think championship, but yeah, towards the end, yeah, I was like settled in third, and and then you start thinking about it because. There's like I couldn't do much more, you know. I was it was it was a little gap, yeah. Uh, as soon as I got into third, so. But yeah, like you said, like uh, top four uh, within, I don't know, you two, said points. two points. It's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty crazy, but uh, make it super interesting and uh, for the fans, for for everybody. So, looking forward to more racing. And Kenny, to you, following up, you're now the points leader. You got the red plate back. Yeah, um, I mean, if you're leading, you want to have obviously. <laughs> A big gap, but other than that, um, if you're not in the leading position, and obviously we have switched red plates quite a bit this year already, even though we're just at round six, um, if you're not leading, you definitely want to keep it close and just not get too many points in between. Um, it seems like obviously Cooper, that's his third main or so that um, he won overall, so you know, all those guys have a good chance of winning, so I haven't won at all yet, so I can't get let anybody get too far away. So, um, but yeah, it's still early, and it's just good to, to keep it consistent. Cooper. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it definitely is hard to, to not think about it in the back of your mind. But I think what's cool is we're all close. You know, every every I feel like all of us know we can win, and and we're up there every weekend. And uh, you know, with with none of us ever winning this championship before, it's a pretty pretty cool thing to have us all this close. So uh, yeah, it's definitely hard not to think about. But it is early, you know, with uh, only six rounds in. But uh, Definitely don't want to have a big mistake that, that really sets you back. All right, we'll open it up for 15 minutes. I remember name and correct affiliation. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, it was it was really hard to pass, honestly. I mean, for as you can see, the freight train we had going, and uh, not a lot of us were making mistakes. So uh, I I kind of knew, you know, I didn't want to wait too late, but I didn't want to be too aggressive and you know go in for aggressive pass and potentially lose positions. So uh, you know, once halfway came, I I kind of told myself, all right, you know, we need to kind of try to fluster him and hopefully get him in a mistake and. Uh, I felt like after the whoops, if I squared them up right and coming into that finish corner, I'd have to really make a, a good effort. But that was really one of the only places that I had in mind. But uh, I think I was able to kind of spook him a little bit to where he missed his line um, in the turn before. And then he cased that, that triple real bad and pretty much left the door wide open. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was tough to... In that situation, you want to try different lines, but you got a guy right on you. So it was tough to kind of race that way, you know, knowing that if you make that little mistake, you know, that you could potentially lose lose positions. So uh, yeah, it was it was tough, but it was nice to to get a good start tonight for sure. Jason Wygat, Racer X. Uh, it's a good bounce back. Do you feel you were actually riding okay in the mud last week, even though you had a crash? But otherwise, do you feel like last week derailed you at all? You rode pretty good beyond that, or is it good to bounce back here? Oh yeah, it's it's obviously good, you know, to to bounce back. I felt good last week, and I was up there all day. Just had that crash, and you know, when I got back up, just wasn't able to to get going like I was hoping. So uh, I mean, it definitely stunk to to fall and not be uh, in the top five. But uh, you know, you can I use it a little bit as redemption to to motivate me this week for sure. Michael Antonovich with Swat Moto Live. For the 450 guys, even though it was a 20-minute race, which is standard, you guys still did 28 laps. Does it get maybe a little bit more mentally taxing because you're hitting the same thing over and over and the track is changing so much, or does it feel like a normal race? Because sometimes when you ride a smaller track, you just kind of feel like it's repetitive. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I think they, they're going to they're gonna agree. It's uh, doing so many laps like that, yeah, it feels even longer than 
if you only do 19 or 20 uh, laps uh, for sure. Uh, just uh, repetitive, uh, and also the track gets yeah rougher and rougher every single lap, and um, and then we get the 250 before us. So it's uh, it's definitely always always tough when you go to East Coast and you have a, a little short, a shorter track. Um, but I knew it was going to be kind of a short lap time because uh, all the lanes and around the stadium it was uh, it was pretty high speed and. Uh, and uh, but good thing the track got deteriorated, so then it was a little slower. But still, like to do if you, yeah, you said twenty laps, it's uh, maybe a record. Uh, for the two fifty guys, you've watched the West Coast dudes for five weeks. Did you watch anything in particular and pick up on how that was going? Or are you all in your own race and not worried about what they're doing? Because I mean, you can watch what technique is or anything and see how the season is or how tracks are if anything's changed out there. I mean, I don't. I don't really know. It's hard to compare to compare like even just race to race like it's hard to compare like how the tracks get like dirt wise because it's all different but um <clears throat> just kind of uh how you never know who's gonna be like like a good guy um just like with 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 colt coming in and and leading basically up until the last race he had the red plate like i don't really think anybody really expected that so it's um it's you know you come in not really knowing that's that's about the only thing i, I think yeah, I'd agree with, uh, I mean, you watch them and, you know, just try and see what they're doing. But we've been, I've been doing it, this is my fifth year, so uh, long enough to, that I know what to expect coming to round one. Yeah, it's hard to expect uh, what your competition is going to be coming into the East Coast rounds. But uh, the only thing I can really relate to with the West Coast riders is riding with my teammates that are on the West Coast. And... It's you basically you know where they're at and if they're at the top of their class you're gonna have the same over here and you're gonna know where you're gonna be at compared to them on the track and we ride with them enough to know what how we're doing and like where we're at coming into the season confidence wise and uh, speed wise. Uh, Justin, this is actually your second Supercross race and your first podium. So are there some things you learned? It doesn't seem like you're a rookie, but you really kind of are indoors at least. Right, it's my second race, so I uh, got to take it slow, but got to take advantage of it at the same time. I'm, I'm ready. I put a lot of work into this season, so can't just let it go to waste like that. And uh, got to put yourself in good positions out there, and I, I felt like I maintained the race pretty good. Maybe should have uh, been a little bit more aggressive, but also a lot of people were, the track was getting to a lot of people. So had to let the race come to me. Got to work on some starts this week and uh, come back and build on this next weekend. Uh, Stefan Legrand, the big USA.com, this is a question for Marvin. Uh, Blake Baggett crashed pretty hard in, in front of you. I mean, did you see it coming? I mean, was it close? Um, yeah, I mean, I was right behind him. So, yeah, I was a little worried for him because uh, it was a gnarly crash. Uh, that section was tough. That little kicker was getting getting deep, and I actually changed line to, to avoid that, and I was on the right side. So good thing I was not following him. Um, I was obviously focused on my line and I was looking at uh, ahead of me, but then I, s I saw him going like over the bars and, and I didn't know where the bike was going to end it up. So it was, uh, it was a little scary, but it was ended up, you know, being okay. So hopefully he is okay. Um, cause, cause yeah, it was a big crash and that section was tough. Um, but yeah, the whole track obviously got, got pretty gnarly and all the rhythms you, you had to be on point and, um, Kind of safe at the same time because it was really easy to make mistakes. Steve Mathis, EagleGrit.com Media. Ken, question for Kenny: um, You look like you were really frustrated behind Joey. Couldn't get around him. Cooper was pulling away. How mad were you in times? And did you have a chance to get him? And maybe were a bit too nice uh, and regret it now? Yeah, no. Um, I just noticed him because once Cooper got by him, um, Cooper gapped us and. I felt like really good and even in early on I feel like when Joey was still leading I had a couple of good um, spots and I kind of came up on Cooper a little bit but I yeah I couldn't ever make the pass happen and then when I was behind Joey and Cooper passed him already he started going and I, I noticed that Joey was either I don't know getting tired or whatever but he was kind of slowing us up a little bit yet he was still going good enough to where I, I couldn't really pass and I just I kind of just pick my battles a little bit. I don't want to, you know, with these turns and, and the intensity that we brought, and I didn't want to just do a, a silly, like, aggressive move and, and bump up on the inside. I mean, I think there's a couple of spots where he could have maybe done it, but just trying to do it in a smart way. And 
Um, I just took a little bit too long, for sure. This is for the 250 guys. Um, usually at the first round of the year for Anaheim 1, the track's pretty mellow uh, to keep everybody going, but these guys are already into it. What were your thoughts on the track? Fairly mellow, easy for you guys to get in the groove? Yeah, I felt like it was a pretty pretty mellow track. It was very intense, but nothing too technical out there, uh, which um, it did get tougher as the night went on with all the ruts, but uh, as far as the, the track without the ruts, it was pretty pretty mellow. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree on that. Um, the track was a good starter layout, and but with the ruts and towards the end of the 15 minutes, it, it was getting pretty gnarly. There was some pretty deep ruts because everyone was pretty much using the same lines, and uh, it got pretty beat up, and you had to keep your focus or else uh, things could go bad like I was seeing coming through the pack. Yeah, same as what these guys said. It was <clears throat> We were all doing pretty much the same rhythms, which is why it was tough to pass. Um, really the only, the only separator, I think, was just the ruts, um, which also makes it a little bit tough to pass because if you're going to run it up the inside of somebody and there's ruts, you got to go across the ruts, and it, it's just kind of a mess. So that's... Um, it was. I mean, it was. It was. It was a decent track. It was. It was hard uh, because of the ruts. Um, as far as just the track layout, though, it wasn't like that gnarly. Um, but I mean, the ruts. The ruts were tough. So the 450 guys. Now there are six races in. Are you still finding things with your bike or technique that you're trying to work on, or is it getting to the point of the season where you're pretty close to the window and you just go to the same setup week in and week out? I've kind of just. Um, stuck with the same. I did one change when we were still at West Coast, but uh, I've kind of just been keeping it the same and try because we got a solid base. I mean, it can always be better, I think, for everybody. But um, at one point, you got to stop and focus on your racing and all the training. Um, yeah, I mean, being in California, you have the team around you, so you actually do pretty much a lot of testing. I mean, just trying things and trying to get better and more comfortable, but. Uh, now that we moved to into uh, into the East Coast in Florida, I think we uh, we just focus on the on models and and, and laps. Uh, so not much going on right now. I'm pretty happy and I've been um, good in practice uh, today. And the, the setup of the bike was uh, was solid today. And um, I had, a, I had another good day of racing. So I'm I'm, I'm happy. Just looking forward for more. And uh, but we won't change anything. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I ran the same stuff pretty much all all the races and then uh last week we felt like i was giving up whoops uh the first couple so we did some stuff there and that that helped a lot so uh last week in the mud didn't get a fair shot but this week was was definitely really good i'm sure now like marv said going back to florida don't mess with anything and uh once daytona comes maybe adjust for that got a final question for austin and cooper austin i know you spent some more time in California in this off season leading up to the series. What was the reason behind that and the change? And do you feel like there was something to that that helped tonight? Um, basically, I've been training uh, at Robbie Raynard's in Oklahoma, and it got too cold, and I had to either go to Florida or California. And at that point, I still didn't know if I was going to be riding west or east. I was ready for west. Um, Mitch put me on east, uh, but I thought I might do west, and I needed to do a little bit of testing. So I just figured I went out to California and we we're gonna stay for a couple weeks, kind of make a decision, like wait for Mitch to tell us. Mitch didn't really tell us, so ended up kind of just getting a house out there and and I've been there for a couple months and now uh, we're, I'm gonna go back to Oklahoma. I would say um, just whenever the weather mellows out and um, it's just not fluctuating as much as it is because it'll be it'll be 60 for two days and then than 20. So whenever it mellows out, I'll probably be back there. But California's been good lately with with the rain that we'll, we've been getting. The tracks have actually been un-California-like. Like, you won't be able to ride for a couple of days, but then when when you get to ride, they've they've been pretty good, I think. So, I mean, I've, I've been pretty happy with California. Cooper, you've always carried yourself as a very confident rider, but even with that, did you feel coming into the season that we'd be six rounds in and you would have won half of them? No, nah. <laughs> definitely not. Um, you know, it, I still have to kind of sit back and and realize what's going on. It's it's hard not to get caught up in it for sure. But you know, it's it's for me. It's just 
it's awesome. I mean, and even here tonight, you know, last year I was here in the Asterix Street with a broken leg, and the year before I popped my shoulder out. So, uh, you know, this place wasn't a place I was looking forward to coming to, and, and to be able to kind of block that out and, you know, uh, turn things around this year and turn things around tonight was uh, was pretty sweet. But, no, I mean, there's no way I would have thought I would have been here, but it's, it's pretty cool to see and, you know, got to uh, keep it going. Thanks, guys.